All right, so here's the engine mounted in the bike. Uh, didn't make it into the last video because I ran out of space uh, on my memory card. But I got the engine mounted to the bike. It is bolted down solid. So I'll come around here and you can have a look at it. And so since I was able to, you know, get it all mounted down and, and everything, I gave me an opportunity to sit on it without the engine, you know, falling off or anything like that. And uh, being as offset as it is to the right, it is proving to be a problem. So let me demonstrate what I mean. Get over here, put my leg over the bike. Now this bike is actually too tall for me, but like I said, it was a $10 bike, so I bought it. I mean, there is almost no room for me to put my leg down. There's nowhere over here to put a foot peg unless it's, a, you know, geez, at least 18 inches away from the frame of the bike. I could kind of come up here in front, but that's kind of dumb. So, not to mention, this right here is the muffler, and uh, there's the air cleaner. So, it's definitely proven to be a problem, so I'm gonna have to do something about it. And of course, if you've been watching, then you know the reason that it's so offset to the right, is so the chain line is correct. See, there's the clutch sprocket. It'll come down here, idler, and there's the rear drive sprocket. So we'll kind of come down here and look up, and that's the reason why it has to be so offset. Uh, if it was more centered in the frame, then that chain wouldn't line up. So, like I said, I got to do something about that. So I went up to Northern Tool and Equipment, and I got this jack shaft kit. So we're gonna put a jack shaft on this thing so I can center that engine in the frame. And I also got a new chain. I needed that, my last one was too short. Uh, you should never add links to a chain. You can always take them out, but you should never add links back to a chain, especially the press fit chain. So, I'll get the, uh, the jack shaft kit all unpackaged and uh, show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, and here's the basic idea. I got the jack shaft kit here. You can see this. And effectively what I'm going to do is it's going to ride in here just underneath the piston or the cylinder head. It's going to come in here and be something like this. Of course the engine will be shifted over towards the center. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make at least one of the bearing retainer brackets. I'm going to utilize the engine casing. There's these four bolts uh, or four threaded holes. One here, here, here and here and I'm going to utilize those uh, to hold one of the bearing retainers and the other one I still haven't quite figured out it'll probably be mounted on the back of the engine plate uh, but for now uh, but uh, at least one of them uh, will probably be a bracket that I'm going to fabricate to come off this engine so that's the basic idea and uh, I guess we just gotta get started. All right, so here's where I'm at with the engine. It needs to come up about three quarters of an inch. So, let me show you what I'm gonna do. So it needs to come in probably two or three inches, but it needs to come up about three quarters of an inch so that the back of this rocker cover, valve cover, uh, doesn't contact the frame. Same here at the front where the base is sitting, We're kind of sitting on the frame a little bit. So, let me show you what I'm going to do. So I got this square tubing, it's an 090 wall thickness, and it comes in at an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do is make some arms that will weld to the existing engine plate down there. Make some arms, and then what I'm going to do is just cut it in half, and that should give me the length to get the engine out and uh, the height to get it up. So, I'll get started on that. All right, I wanted to make one little note here. This is called HREW 
uh, square tube, which stands for hot rolled electric welded. And you can see there on the bottom, right there, that little nudge, that's where it got welded together. That's the seam. If I flip it over, you can kind of see well, that dark sharpie mark is my line, but it's the one just on this side. That's the that's the seam where this tube was welded. So when you're doing this, you and you're going to be mounting something, drilling holes, you want to do it on the flat side where there's no seam. So cut the side where there is a seam. You can see the seam right there. So just a note. And there we go. We got our two little extension pieces. They're just a piece of one and a half inch square tube, uh, cut in half. And uh, I'll show you a little bit how they're going to work. I'll set them up sort of like that. And take my engine plate, which I mentioned before is a fantastic template. So get these the proper distance apart and then come in and mark and drill those holes. All right, so here's the new extension arms. I got the holes drilled. So uh, now I'll get the bolts and uh, bring the engine over here and we'll bolt it up and see how it fits. All right, there's a quick bottom view of uh, how those extension arms uh, mount to the bottom of the engine. All right, so let's have a look now and see how this engine is going to fit in the frame now. Okay, so that's roughly how it's going to go. You can see I've taken the fuel tank off. It's still hitting right back there at the back of the frame. A little rocker cover, valve cover. So, what the problem is, is right up here in the front, let me see if I can get this moved around here. Right there. You can see how the little extension arm is resting on part of the tube. So, I'll get in here, I'll make a mark, and I'll have to make a little notch in my uh, extension arm there. Okay, a couple quick things while this engine's still here on the workbench. Uh, I did make that little notch in there, as you can see. And another thing that I added were these little rubber uh, pads. And I got them in all four corners. Hopefully that'll take the place of that mounting bracket. Remember I mentioned in a previous video that it's important to have some vibration uh, dampening system on these engines otherwise you can crack the aluminum engine housing. So I got these little rubber feet in there hopefully they'll help and so got the notch cut so we'll go over to the bike and uh, see if we can get it to fit. Alright let's try this one more time. Get the engine up in there. Uh, that looks pretty alright. Oh. Look at that. I don't know how well you can see that, but we'll try this. We've got about, I can get my finger in there, so there's about a half inch gap between this uh, valve cover and the seat tube of the bike. So, come around here to the front. And there you can see the little notch in the uh, extension plates, and the extension arms. And, uh, Everything looks pretty good. Hell, I can even uh, drain the oil. There's a little oil drain plug right there. So, I'll just uh, keep playing with this and might be putting some welds on this here in just a little bit.